I was all ready to like make a video today that was based around my hopes and dreams for E3 but as you know in the past 24 hours there has been a mass amount of leaks and a lot of my hopes and dreams actually came up in the leaks which is actually very upsetting because there are moments that I would have been very very happy to go crazy on Twitter about or go crazy or jump up and down about and that's not going to happen anymore because it's just going to be instead of me going oh my god it's going to be like oh yeah I knew that was going to be there. Um, I wanted to take the time today to talk not only just about um, E3 leaks, but leaks in general, I guess. Um, I just want to start off by saying I do not really blame video game companies, or sorry, video game journalists for sharing around these leaks and sharing this information. It kind of is news, and at this point you should probably mute, and this is what I do around, try to do around E3 time. I mute everything, but I forgot to mute one of them, and uh, I got... Le I got like the leaks were kind of shown to me and people were retweeting the leaks anyway and it was kind of very um it was very strange it was very strange to see and I can't really blame people because once it's out there that's how information works if you don't want to get spoiled for something it's probably the best idea is to stay off the internet because again that's how the world works at this point um I don't usually make negative videos I'm not saying this is gonna be negative because I think it's gonna be framed as a positive in the end but I do want to talk about uh e3 leaks specifically so yeah, if you've been around in the past 24 hours, you know that there has been a mass amount of E3 leaks. Um, this, you know, we can frame this as, oh well, you know, it hurts the fans because we won't get this cool reveal that we've wanted for so long. But I don't think that's the only way to frame it. And at first I was like, oh poor me, poor me, I won't be able to see this. But then I thought to myself for a second, what about the developers who have been working on this game for so long? And now all of a sudden have to deal with the fact that their game has been revealed not in a great new trailer or in a fantastic like uproar of a crowd. Instead, it's being revealed on a 4chan link or a Reddit link or a NeoGAF link, not that that's still a thing, or something like that, or on a Twitter link or on a Twitter photo or on a story on GameSpot or Polygon or Kotaku or any other video game news site. How does that make you feel? To me, I would feel like absolute shit to be working my ass off for a freaking four to five to maybe even some, in some cases, six years on a project only to have it be revealed through images, screenshots, and a leaker online. To me, it would make me feel like shit. It would be kind of like if they gave away the information of every single episode of your favorite TV show and you had already made up predetermined kind of like ideas of how good it was before it comes out because that happens we can say it doesn't happen but we're human and that happens i want to just basically make the point that developers and video game companies no matter how big they are no matter how small they are should have the right to reveal their game in the way that they choose to because believe it or not the reveal of a game is the starting point and if you trip at the starting point the whole race to the, the release of the game is going to be a bumpy one, and it's going to be a very aggravating one. Reading a tweet from Cordy Barlog, and I think it's actually a very important way to look at this, because he is a developer. He is a guy who had one of the best reveals of a video game ever. It was Sony E3 2016, and it was um, with an orchestra. It was with an orchestra. It was with um, the reveal of Kratos from The Shadows. You remember, you know, show me what you know. I am hungry. And everyone goes crazy. Everyone goes nuts. Everyone goes insane for God of War being revealed. And... He had something to say to Jason Schreier. Now, Jason Schreier is actually a very good journalist when it comes to breaking news uh, within video game companies of bad dealings and overworked employees. He's oh, If you read those articles, they actually are very good. But in some cases, he has this very bad opinion. I say bad opinion because it's against my opinion. I know it's a weird way of saying it. But I, like, I don't like the opinion that... A, a, a journalist has the right to, to show off or like leak a game. Uh, like it's a journalistic and a duty to do this. Yes, you will further your career, but like I still don't think morally it is the right thing to do. Um, yeah, so he was saying that like it's only really hurting the video game companies or the big dogs of the video game companies. Corey Barlog said, I could not disagree more, Jason. Jason, sometimes it's actually humans who have worked really hard to create a reveal that will actually surprise us, which he knows all about. Corey Barlog knows a lot about it. I get that is just how the game is played, but when you publish a reveal leak, you rob hardworking teams of revealing on their terms, which is kind of what I was saying, and I totally 100% agree. But like I said, that is how the information game is played, which again, he's not an idiot, he understands that's how the internet is. But writing this off as a corporate boogeyman, being the only one who's really hurt here, really marginalizes the talented developers, developers who work their ass off to show the world something for the first time. They lose too. And I could not agree more. 
it is not just the big wig up on top of the building in the skyscraper, you know, clenching his hands together and rubbing his white Persian cat. It's not just him who gets hurt by this. It's 110% of developers as well. And you might be saying like, you know, it's just a leak. It's just a leak. 100% common is just a leak. But if you think of it this way, um, can you imagine if beforehand, before God of War was revealed, we all knew it was going to be a God of War. We all knew that's how it was going to be revealed. The first thing of E3 was going to be God of War. Um, and we knew it was going to, we knew for sure it was going to be this, we knew sure, for sure it was going to be that. Um, and then the reveal happens and the music starts playing and then we hear like, we see, we see the boy sitting there in the cold and we're like, oh, that's God of War. It wouldn't have been as big as Kratos walking out of the shadows. It wouldn't have gotten the game as hyped. No one would have cared as much. And if you imagine if that gameplay preview leaked beforehand, it wouldn't have been as special either. And I think you can also say that about Final Fantasy VII. That game has lived the past few years off of the fact that it had one of the best reveals in E3 history. I think we do have to understand that, yes, the big people in the companies, the big corporate people in the companies, they want our money. That is what they're after. We know this. This is a fact. But we can't deny that there are people and talented and creative people that are working under them that genuinely care about the things that they are working on in some cases. And robbing them of the way that they get to reveal their project is very, it's very sad, but also I think it's very disheartening because again, it starts you off on the wrong foot. Again, even when you look at someone like Cory Barlow, like his game was leaked beforehand. We didn't even know if that was for sure, if it was the real thing. It turned out it was true, but we didn't even know about it for sure. It was like leaked images and concept art. He said that he felt helpless. He said that he felt like, like the whole world was falling in around him. And like, that's because there are people like Cory Barlog and there's people like so many directors out there, so many artists who genuinely care about their video game, who genuinely care about it. Take something like Death Stranding is another great example. Can you imagine if that game was like everyone got to see that game before it was actually released and we didn't get these explanations through different trailers over time? I think people would have a completely different perception of what that game is. Now, I'm sorry for ranting for so long, but it's just my opinion on this. As always, I would like to hear you guys' opinion on this. I... Maybe I have a warped opinion on this. Maybe I have a different opinion on this. Other people, I would like to hear your opinion on this. I think that it is not a journalistic right or duty to leak a game or to reveal a game or to show off game leaks. I think when we're so close to E3 at this point, like two days away, I think people could have left it. I think people could have just left it. I understand how the information, as Cory Barlick says, how the information game works in quotations. But I think it's time. I think at that point you could just leave it. That's just my take. Thanks for listening, guys.